I'm going to get some updates to the Studio 5000 program that ships with our PLC trainers. And I want to use as an opportunity to talk about how we can load programs from the SD card. Now, there is one parameter that we need to set depending on exactly what you want to do. So let's talk first about why would you want to load a program from an SD card. In our case, we are shipping out multiple versions of the same product. We're making trainers here and we may ship 20 of these a day. We don't actually pull out a computer and open up Studio 5000 and download the program. We have them set up on the SD card so that you can just pop it in. It updates the firmware, installs the program, same on the HMI. So it saves us a lot of time when we're running through the exact same thing. Another reason is to minimize our downtime during a failure. We can have the SD card already set up with the program on it but have it set to not load unless it has a blank program. And how will we end up a blank program? You have a PLC failure. Your technician swaps the PLC out, swaps the SD card out, powers it up. It'll look and say, hey, I have no program. And it would go to the SD card, read it, and install it. And the third one is a lot of times we need to make remote upgrades. And, you know, there's a lot of security issues as far as Team Viewer and, you know, all these access points is, we can set up an SD card to send to someone and have them stick it in there and update the program. Under the front cover of many Compact Logics and Control Logics PLCs, you'll find an SD card reader. So to show you how much of a time saver this is going to be, I'm going to open up a new Compact Logics PLC and I'm going to do it the typical way of going ahead and downloading the program. Because in order to set up our SD card, we actually do need to have it installed onto a PLC. I'm going to set its IP address with our IP Explorer. And we have video showing how much of a time saver this is going to be. But I'm going to make it 192, 168, 110, which is the IP address that our trainers ship with. And then I'll go ahead and set it to static. And plug it into my network. Then in Studio 5000, I have the program that I want to install on the SD card. So I'm going to go Communications, Who Active. And notice my IP address was on 191 because that's actually what I was developing on this on. Um, it does not have to be a matching IP address. I could have done this on 191, but I wanted to show you just pulling it out of the box. So I'm going to go up here to Ethernet. And then I'm going to select 192.168.110. And then I'm going to hit the download button. And immediately I'm going to have to do this update firmware. And so part of the time savings of the SD card is we will not have to do any of the steps. But I'm going to go ahead and verify this is what I want to do. Hit the update button. Click yes. And I had it paused during that. But it took about five minutes to do that firmware update step. You can look at how much the time just jumped and verify me on that. But now I'm going to hit download. And typically, you would now want to go ahead and put it into run mode. And just so we can see what it would look like, we're going to go ahead and put it in run mode. And then we want to go to controller properties. There's a few ways to get there. It's actually this icon right here. But the easiest way is to right click the controller at the top of the controller organizer on the left and go to properties. And then we want to go to the non-volatile memory. And it says no image in non-volatile memory. But right now we have a load store button here that is grayed out. And it's grayed out because we're in run mode. So we're going to go to communications. And we want to put it in program mode. And that's going to make the load store button available. I'm going to click on it. And so we can load the image if it actually had something stored on the compact flash. Or we can store it, which means we can put it onto the compact flash. So I do want to store it, but there's a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we could set this on here just as user initiated. And what that means is you're going to be right here and you're going to load from here. Or we can do it on power up, which is actually what we do on our trainers. Or we could do it on uninitialized memory. Now let's talk for a second about the difference between power up and uninitialized memory. Uninitialized memory would be like I just pulled this out and did it. And arguably, that is perfectly fine for even us setting them up. But a lot of times when I'm doing videos for you, I'll go grab a PLC just like I went and grabbed this one. And so if I don't put it just on power up, 
we could end up shipping a PLC with the wrong program. So I'm going to select on power up on this one. And then we have the automatic firmware update. And we want to enable and store the firmware files to the image because otherwise all it's going to do is put the program on it, but it won't have the firmware that we just spent five minutes installing. So now I'm going to hit the store button and click yes. And we're going to continue with the store. And it actually is going to boot us offline. So while it's doing this store, it's not going to let us go online. So I'm going to go back to communications, who active. And notice we're getting the swirly and the cancel and everything. That's because it's not here. But we'll go ahead and just browse right here. And we'll wait until 110 comes back. In fact, we should see it disappear in just a second. So, well, it isn't disappear because it is actually out there, but it's not going to let us connect to it. So on the front of the PLC, and yeah, I don't want to move it too much because it is doing, oh, well, it just changed. So now um, it is done, but you could see the SD light on it during that. And actually, while it was gone, it did disappear for a second, finally, but we'll go ahead and select it and go back online. And now under the non-volatile memory, which is the SD card, it says that it has our trainer file. Now I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from this PLC. And I am going to power this PLC off and grab another brand new one out of the box. Then I'm going to pop the SD card out of this one. This is why you end up with the blue tape. That way we can figure out which one we actually are tracking. And I'm going to take the notice about the firmware off of the new Compact Logics PLC. I'm going to pop the SD card out of it. Put our custom SD card in, then pop its power connector off, and then I'll plug the power connector in. Now it's going to do its typical power up dance lights. And so now it is installing the firmware. Then it'll start going through its typical power up checks, loads the program from the SD card. Does its little dancing lights and it's ready to go. We have a solid green run light. And now, if we go to communications, who active and open up our Ethernet in that one step of installing the SD, put the firmware on, assign the EIP address, installed this PLC program, and put it into run mode. If you ever need to re download the original program to your trainer, then our Getting Started Guide has some great resources, including those files, your Wiring Enough to Get Started Guide, and gets us started through the courses for this trainer. And I've created this playlist right here with your next steps.